Hi, let's start with our best practices for RTL design. So first of all, before we even talk about best practices, let's understand why do you even need best practices or why do you need the rules to be followed for RTL design? So we had, when we were learning very law, we had talked about there are some guidelines for designing combinational logic but let's go through just those gu guidelines again and understand okay. so we had talked about that when you're writing a very low code sensitivity list is very important why it is important is the say because the synthesis tool ignores the sensitivity list and it will generate two input and gate for this logic so synthesis will ignore and it will create to input and gate and in the net list whenever a changes or b changes your output will change but at simulation level at rtl level simulation level you have only given a in the sensitivity list and because of that this output will only change when a changes so synthesis ignores the sensitivity list and generates as per the logic while simulation relies on the sensitivity list. Now this leads to simulation and synthesis match, mismatch. Now you can catch this issue while running simulation or maybe not or when you run simulation will get level synthesis. But if you follow rules that your sensitivity list has to be complete and have all the things which are causing a change in the behavior then that mistake can be avoided so this shows one of the example why these rules are important to catch issues in your design of course you can catch these issues by writing test benches as well but it will take much longer writing specific test benches and sometimes even with all that you can miss those issues so it's very important to have these rules like this rules guidelines so as you don't miss or skip design issues let's also this look at this example it in this example basically there is a combinational loop in the design how there is a combinational loop basically always at a b y is a function of y itself so this creates an unintentional combinational loop it can lead to a race condition in the design or also oscillatory behavior in the design of course this is non-synthesizable and guideline is you should use flops to break the loop now again this issue can be missed maybe functional verification will catch it or may not catch it maybe while running synthesis you will catch these issues again this is a rule that when you are basically want to reuse the values flop this value and then use it this is again another rule and these again rules help us to identify issues in the design catch them early and how we how do we catch these issues early we'll talk about that and as we had seen in while uh, running very log if you have else statements which are not complete that can also lead to unintentional latches in the design for example here in the if loop i am assigning value to both y and z but in the else loop i am only assigning value to y and that can cause z or z to become a latch if all conditions are not covered then latches can be inferred in the design and again this issue can be caught very very early if we follow the rules that all the else uh, statements sh should have all the elements which are part of the if statement as well so unintentional latches can be created in the design so not following the rules can lead to unintentional problems in the design so if you're not following the rules it can lead to unintentional problems in the design typically these pro problems will be caught by verification 
but sometimes it's too costly to catch these in verification you may need to write test benches maybe some of these can only be caught at netlist level and worst case is if verification misses it it can lead to silicon failure now if you follow some rules guidelines which are known as best practices for rtl designs the we can avoid these issues and avoiding mistakes in vlsi flow in rtl design is very very important part of the design flow because having a bad silicon is really really costly so following rules following guidelines allows us to catch these issues early but the question is how do you ensure you are so another thing to keep in mind is why catching these issue early is important in your traditional product life cycle what happens is you start with designing hardware then you design software and then you start designing integration and test but if you start doing all these things in parallel start doing things together your time to market can be reduced you can take your product out in the market early so this 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 method of doing starting things early is also known as shift left all these rules following these rules and guidelines also enables what is known as shift left so basically when you in your vlsi flow you're doing rtl design then you're doing synthesis then maybe you will do dft then you will do physical design and all these steps the cost of finding these issues let's say if the cost of finding an issue is x here typically it is a rule of thumb it becomes 10x in next stage of the design because if you find an issue here you not only have to fix here you have to go back and redo some of these steps to catch those issues so even in vlsi design flow not only just do developing hardware software together or in parallel it's also important it reduces the cost to catch those issues early so rather than in doing in functional verification if you can catch some of these issues right at rtl stage itself it reduces your cost by 10x and that is also known as shift left in your vlsi flow now the question is it's we understand it's important to catch these issues early but how do you catch these issues early that is what we're going to talk about so the question is how do you catch these issues early and that is an important thing we should understand there are multiple flows multiple ways of catching these issues early one of the important ways is known as linting and we'll talk about that so one of the most important ways by you can catch these issues is by no something which is known as rtl linting rtl linting is nothing but you use a lint tool on your design or which is typically rtl files to catch certain rules or issues which are present in your design so what happens here is you provide your design this is nothing but rtl files for your design verilog vhdl whatever those files are and you run a typically a lint tool this is provided by multiple eda vendors and what that lint tool does is it enables a set of rules so lint tools come with their built in rules typically these are hundreds in numbers you decide what rules or what guidelines i want to follow let's say i want to follow r1 r2 let's say these are multiple rules you say okay i i want in my design flow in my company i want to follow these r1 r2 r3 rules so that these problems are avoided so then lint tool takes these rules which are part of their uh, product reads in your design files and reports if any of these rules are not being honored like these rules can be for example if there is a feedback loop in the design rtl so lint will rule will flag it if there is incomplete sensitivity list like we talked about it will flag that if there are an inferred latches in the design it will flag that if once you see those design issues you review those and fix your design rerun and till your lint design is clean of lint you keep repeating this step and once that is done you basically go to the next stage of the design so the advantage you get out of here is you don't have to write any test bench 
typically these rules or policy which you need to follow are common general uh, the rules of thumbs so you just give your rtl files to a tool and it flags issues in the design so it's very very easy to run very no you don't have to write any test punches so it's very less resource consuming very ex no additional extra effort required other than just running this lint tool and it helps you catch all of these issues very very fast the advantage of lint tool is to catch these issues pretty much early in the flow right at the rtl designer you you don't even need a verification engineer and catch these issues early fix these issues early and improve your time to market and make the flow shift left so lint allows you to catch these issue early for best rtl design practices you always do rtl linting let's now understand what is this linting how do you run it what are the various aspects of this linting so how does linting help linting is the fastest way to catch basic issues in your design it is the fastest way to catch those issues without needing to write any test punches as well so kind of issues just an example issues not an exhaustive list are there unintentional latches in my design lint can catch those issues are there any set reset conflict maybe set and reset you have connected incorrectly it can catch those issues ah uh, if you are using arrays is the array out of range you are assigning to out of range value are there combinational loops in the design are there ports which are driven by multiple nets or are there nets which are driven by multiple drivers are there non synthesizable logic in my design are there nets which i mistakenly not connected in the design are there let's say my design philosophy is to always use synchronous reset are there any asynchronous resets in the design this and multiple such kind of issues lint can catch very very easily just by giving your rtl as an input so it's that's why it's the fastest way lowest cost ways of identifying issues in your design so let's take an example okay so this is one of the rtl code and there is a mistake in this code okay what is the mistake is you are assigning value to an out of index range it's a counter in the design your q is 7 down to 0 q underscore i is 7 down to 0 you are running this loop here for i equal to 8 you will assign value to qi index 8 but the index 8 does not exist in the design for this q underscore i so that's a mistake in the design lint will catch this issue very very easily when you if you try to catch this issue using functional verification you may have to write test bench you may have to notice specifically for this check but for lint if you just give this rtl and run it it will flag okay there is a problem there is an out of index you are trying to access so that's the benefit of the lint it can catch issues very very fast and very very easily in your design this slide shows another example where lint can be very very useful so that you adhere or follow the guidelines for a design it can help you identify design oriented check what i mean by design oriented check is So let's say you have a design here. Output port is driven by combinational logic. Now, it's a general general guideline or thumb rule which should be which is followed that input and out output ports of the design should be driven uh, by flops. Why that particular rule is followed is it's basically not a functional problem, but it can be a timing problem if these are. It can be difficult to meet timing if these are not driven by flop because this combinational logic can be outside the design and you have to follow some guidelines to make sure timing closure is done so it's an accepted good design practice to register basically flop both the incoming and outgoing signals to a module and that helps in timing closure now how to enforce such a rule you can use lint and lint can also help check these design oriented checks that it's a rule it's a guideline in my design that every incoming data is flop or every outgoing data is also flop and it's it's not a functionality problem if you don't 
do it but it can become a timing problem and these design this is so this is a design oriented check and these design oriented checks actually can we can make sure lint catches these issues which may not you may not even be able to catch unless you write specific checks in your functional verification so lint only not only allows us to catch basic rules it also allows us to catch design oriented checks as well so what we talked about was it's for from design point of view it's important for best rtl design practices we follow a certain set of rules certain set of guidelines and how to enforce those guidelines the method is lint lint allows us to enforce these guidelines and catch these issues which can be potential problems in the design pretty much very early in the flow right when you are coding the rtl